What's going on guys? Security Guru here. Uh, right now I'm about to do the part 2 of the Hike Vision 4.0 new layout menu. Here it goes. Right click opens the main menu. Okay. Um, so it shows the different channels over here. Um, and then the house right here is the new menu. This is the new menu for 4.0. Okay. Um, they changed the layout. Um, I'm not sure for what reason, but uh, I guess it's supposed to be a little bit more modern and all that good stuff. So um, if you go to the menu, you see live playback, file management, uh, smart analysis, camera, storage, and all that good stuff. So um, we'll go through this two later. Actually, this three um, or this four, because this part right here is... Um, you know you need to have a camera there so we'll, we'll take a look at that in a little bit okay so the main thing is system this is where all the settings are and you know camera configuration network configuration um, all the other stuff that the, the DVR or NVR can do obviously each model has their own settings but ultimately they're they're fairly the same so I'd like to dive into this one first so that we can um, understand the different uh, features available so here uh, again you see all the time and all that good stuff so if you didn't pick up the correct time through the network you can manually change it right here actually right now it's uh, 347 as I set this up so you can either you can just click down here okay um, and then this device number has something to do with the remote control so when you have the remote control, you know, if you have two DVRs or three DVRs in the same uh, area, you can um, change this and then so you can switch from uh, different DVRs or NVRs with one remote. You know what, let me, let me stop, let me apply this and let me stop the beeping first, okay? So if you go to event um, and then you go to exceptions, okay? Um, right here is enable hint. Basically, it'll give you a beeping sound when these things happen, okay? Hard drive full, error, IP conflicts, and all this good stuff. So anything, any problems that the system will have, it'll create that beeping sound. I know that it's the hard drive is because I just fired it up. I don't have any of these other stuff there. So that's why the beeping is, it, it, I know that it's the hard drive. But anyway, so what you can do is you can just uncheck it like so, and then click apply. Um, Sometimes it does, depending on which system, I've, I've noticed this already before where even though you click all, um, it doesn't really remove the others. But so, you know, just in case you click all and then you l remove the hint, it's still beeping. Just go to hard drive error um, and then you'll see that it's still checked in there for some reason and just uncheck it and you should be good. Okay. So, yeah. So after we apply that, it's good. So as you can tell, it's no longer beeping. So let's go back to the general. Okay, so yeah, so depending on, um, you know, the resolution of the monitor that you have, if you have higher resolution, obviously you do want to take advantage of that. Um, this particular monitor, I only have a 1920 by 1080, so it already automatically detected. Um, again, if I had a higher, like a 4K TV or something like that, I can change that to be able to maximize the resolution that my cameras can show. So you can do that. Um, NTSC PAL, before this makes sense, uh, this was an analog output, uh, but nowadays, you know, it, it's all digital through HDMI or VGA, uh, NTSC doesn't really matter anymore. Um, but just in case you see something black and white, it might be the PAL or NTSC on your DVR, especially if it's an analog camera. And then, daylight savings time, depending on which time zone you're at, you can enable it, uh, you can do automatic or you can do manual. Uh, whatever it is that you feel like uh, is necessary. Um, here, uh, enter password, okay? Actually, let's go to auto logout. So basically, if the system is inactive for five minutes, the system will automatically log out for you, okay? So with that being said, so it keeps it secure just in case, let's say, your employees or um, somebody that you feel like you didn't want to give access to um, if you leave, if you leave for five minutes, you can, you know, you can change it one minute, two minutes. I think five minutes is a good happy medium um, because obviously you don't want it to keep on logging out you as you turn your head all the time. So uh, five minutes I think is a good one. Um, or you can make it do never, meaning that 
it'll never log out. Sometimes, a lot of times, especially if you're the only one that has access to it, um, it's it's kind of good to just have it available for you. Uh, you don't have to keep on retyping the password or anything like that. So you want to do never, and then what it'll do is again it'll never log out. Okay. Um, also, a secondary part of that is you want it to log out. So just again, so it'll go back to the live view without you having to go back to live view. Um, you can disable the and en the enabled password. So again, if ever you get out of here and then you let's 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 go there. So um, so let's apply that. So let me go back out by going here. Go to live view. So now, if ever I wanted to right click and then try to go to the main menu and go to the settings, I don't need to enter the password anymore. Um, obviously, again, for security measures, you wanna have that enabled, but again, it's up to you guys if you wanted to um, just make it simple. And again, you know that only you will have access to the system. So again, let's get out um, and by hitting apply, uh, we save all the settings and then we can go to the next one. Okay, so the next one is the user. This one is very useful for you so that you can give different permissions to different um, levels of employees or friends or family or whatever. So what you can do is you can click add and then you can, uh, it'll ask you for your password, right? So once, once it asks you for your password, let me put that in here. Um, again, as I mentioned to you, you cannot use the pattern to, um, to do anything in here. So you have to have your password. So here, so let's say we can make a user one. Um, I don't even know if it's gonna let me do it, but let's say test one, two, three, four, five again. Because uh, again, username, usually I think they have a, they have a minimum or whatever. But uh, anyways, so let's do this. All right, you can see, you can, operator basically has almost everything except for admin. Guest, you're able to select what you want them to do and all that good stuff, which again, I'll show you guys how to do. So let's say we do guest, uh, we hit okay. Um, yeah, so I guess it let me do it. What you could do is uh, you could do live view permissions. See, let's say again in a given scenario where you have a problematic employee or a manager, uh, specifically a manager, because you know, a manager you want them to see all the cameras, but if they're the problem, you can have like let's say a hidden camera on there. Um, and then what you could do is you could simply just deactivate the camera. So if you deactivate the camera, what's going to happen is it's still running in the background, but they cannot see the camera. So they think that it doesn't exist. So basically they'll see, let's say, for example, this is a 32 channel system. They'll see 31 cameras and then they won't know that one of the cameras is recording them uh, per se. So you can do that and then just hit OK. And then what's going to happen is you'll log in as the, the guest account and then everything will uh, go as planned as I mentioned. And then again, you can modify it, you can change your passwords and stuff like that, or you can change the uh, level of the user, okay? You could also delete. So let's say we didn't, you know, we fired this guy or whatever, you can just go ahead and simply delete it, okay? And then network. Uh, network, this one is, we set this up earlier, like I mentioned to you, it says, uh, DHCP um, is no longer enabled because we made it into a static IP. Um, if your router did, if you change your router, obviously now all your settings are gone. Um, and then maybe this uh, IP sequence right here is gonna be different. You'd wanna enable DHCP, click apply, and let it pick up the new one. Um, obviously I didn't switch routers, so it's still stuck with the, with the original one. But again, as I mentioned to you, after you do this, just hit hit uncheck it so you can make it static again and you can just simply apply okay uh, ddns uh, before there was this stuff but you know if you were doing no ip um, so if you're not going to use uh, the the platform access you can do this uh, you can sign up um, a, a certain membership with dy and dns no ip um, or custom dns if you had your own or if there's some some other company that uh, you work with you can do that so you, you custom dns you'll see the server address your domain and then sometimes it requires you to have username and passwords so yeah if you enable that that's that's just for that purpose um, and then this one pppoe is um, it's not too common anymore but some modems if you don't have a router, you can simply just go here, put in the PPPoE username and password, and then enable it, and then you're good to go. So here is NAT. 
and that is um, it works with your um, router okay so if you if you hit enabled what it'll do is it'll look for a UPnP enabled router okay so what it'll do is it'll automatically do the port forwarding for you so you can skip the port forwarding steps if your router is fairly new and you have PPPoE or sorry UPnP enabled okay UPnP allows you to be able to like I said not have to do the port forwarding manually and then you can you can do manual ports or what it'll do is or you can do auto what and then it'll give it a random port number this is extra security actually so that you know nobody can kind of sniff your um, s different ports but again I'm not sure if you're familiar with that so usually manual just leave it alone and then have it with this um, and then if it's good it'll say active right here if it doesn't have anything active here that means unfortunately your router is not a UPnP enabled router or it's not enabled so you can go in there and uh, you know change your settings and all that good stuff but ultimately this kind of makes things a little bit easier um, if it's available so yeah so right now I'm just gonna disable it click apply now we go back now we go to the network advanced settings okay um, you can do the email notif email authentication here uh, what this does is it allows you to get a detection from the camera or an alarm um, and it'll send you an email alert uh, I'll show you guys this in a different segment of the video um, so that you know you can you'll know how to set it up but it's very simple we like to use Gmail as the server as the SMTP server because it's been pretty stable and then also it so we don't have to kind of think about it everybody kind of has a gmail account and then if you don't have one you can simply create one um, and then you can add different receivers right here uh, you can have up to three so what will happen is again if there's any motion um, detected what will happen is they'll send them a screenshot or a snapshot of the of the video and then you can take a look at it quickly and see if it's an issue if it's not an issue ignore it or um, you can go ahead and you know start playback or do live view or call the police whatever it is that you feel like you need to do so yeah so after you set this up you hit apply and then you go to the next step um, platform access here's the thing that I was telling you about see here's here it's good that this happened um, offline the reason why this is is um, sometimes the primary DNS is incorrect or um, it picks up the routers uh, primary DNS but it doesn't work so the the way to fix this is you go to TCP and then you go to um, primary DNS change it uh, we'll use 8.8.8.8 so you go ahead and hit apply um, and then usually that'll fix it uh, again we have another we have another video that will that will show you guys this um, and then it should say online on the bottom right there so yeah okay so anyways well I'll show you guys that in a different video and then more settings um, alarm host IP that's just if ever you um, if you have like another uh, server that you want to connect to so that it'll send alerts to that um, a little bit tricky don't really use it too much so we're not even gonna dabble on that and then ports you can manually change the ports um, again if you didn't use UPnP uh, you know you can you can change it to 88 again for extra security and all that good stuff okay that's it for the part two of the new hike vision 4.0 new layout menu I will be uploading the rest in different segments so it's a little bit easier for you guys to watch if you guys have any questions please leave a comment below or shoot me a message please subscribe so that we can go ahead and help you guys out even more and as I mentioned before, if you guys have any other questions on any other DVRs or NVRs in regards to security, don't hesitate to ask and I will give you guys any uh, feedback or any supports that I can provide. Thank you and have a good day.